Well, hi, everybody. Guess what? I'm with my precious grandchildren, Hunter and Carter. Say hi, everybody. Hi. What are we doing, guys? Picking juicy mushrooms. What are we underneath, Carter? What are we underneath? A net? A giant net. Carter? I mean, Hunter, what kind of net is this? Um, a bird net. Uh -huh. Why do we have a bird net down here for? Because it's already cooking right in the berries. Turkey's the berries. Well, look at here. Look at the raspberries in here. Since I put this nut down, we've been having all kinds of wonderful raspberries, aren't we? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and pick those in there, Hunter? So I walk right in there. There we go. Oh, this is the best, huh? Nothing like picking raspberries with your grandchildren. Now, let's see how many we can get like in the... Nothing like eating a lot of Let's see how many we can get in the bucket versus in their tummies, right? Huh? Aww, <laughs> oh, here, you're missing one over there. Great big one right there. These are big, big purple raspberries. Yeah. Right there. there we go. Oh yeah, here you go. Put oh, oh, you too? All right. So what do you like doing with raspberries, guys? What do you like using them for? You eat them. Mm. And eat raspberry them? milkshakes. Oh, milkshakes? And pies mm. and smoothies. Smoothies, yeah. What do you like about raspberries, Hunter? Mm, just eating them normal. Just eating them normal? Yeah. Well, go easy. We're not going to have any for Nana. Poor <laughs> Nana. So that's what we were doing today. We are picking raspberries. It's working. We, I came down one day, the side of the net was up a little bit and the turkeys ran underneath and destroyed the raspberries. But there's enough left here so we can enjoy this. Oh, there's a bunch more in here, guys. We got buckets of them in here. Oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, hello, everybody again. And uh, as you can see, we finished up picking raspberries with the grandchildren. That's always exciting to have them come along and help, of course. Probably more went in the stomachs in the container, but I got a, I got a few left there. Um, actually, these weren't the ones we were picking. We we're picking some of the purple red ones down by the road. But these here were black raspberries. They're pretty well done. So what I want to do in this video here, not just talk about picking raspberries, which we did, is talking about how to prepare them for next year. So these are wrapping up, uh, pretty well picked. Um, what I'm gonna do is now show you how to prepare these for next year. Because you just don't just let the berries wrap up. You gotta get in there and do some things, some cultural things, which I'm gonna show you. And um, so we can get some beautiful raspberries for next year, hopefully. So here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on getting the netting off. We do have some, it's getting a little dark, but you have some bird netting on it. Can kind of help keep the birds out. Uh, I did have a few birds that fly up inside. But I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, gloves on because black raspberries tend to have thorns. Uh, I guess they do culture some that don't have any thorns on, but uh, these do. So we're going to go ahead and, and pull the uh, netting off of here. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're going to do as far as preparing these guys for next year. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to dig into this uh, bush right here. Now, there are two different support systems you can do. Um, some do a poles in the ground like this. These are just some pieces of a uh, two by two. Uh, stuck in the ground and I do attach the canes to them and then I'm going to show you the other support system come over here Linda um, Netting still around this here. I got to pull this off in a moment, but this is more of a trellising system with um, Cable between the two and then we do it support the uh, vines on that But um, we'll get that in a little bit here. Let's go back to this one here. All right, so so black raspberries like I say they grow on the fruit is produced off of next year's, I'm sorry, the fruit is produced off of the following year's growth. So I'll give you an example. I'm, what I'm cutting out right now is the growth we had last summer. I'm gonna get this off of here, hold on here. I think I need to be sharp for my, <laughs> my clippers, sorry about that. But anyways, uh, so I'm cutting off the old, um, the old vines gonna pull them out like that. Now already what's coming up here, if you can see down here, then I know it's starting to get a little dark, but uh, that's the new ones coming up, these new shoots here, okay? So we'll deal with those in a moment here where we get the old stuff out of the way. And without the color. Yes, it's it's fresh, new green, and- um, Almost a- Almost a, like a, a minty. A minty green. color, yeah, yeah. So, so it helps you to know which ones- not Right, green. right, yeah. The old ones here, I'll pull one out here, as you can see, the old ones are just kind of brown and almost looks like a grape. Thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then this is this is where the fruit was this year. You can see the. Um, go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where the old uh, 
You can see right there, we go where the old, picked. where they were picked, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, that's what we want. So now we've got a couple of, of, of new canes coming out of here. I only want about four, so I'm gonna take this one out. This one's kind of struggling anyways. I was a little clip that one four? out of uh, Four is really maxing because it, it gets overcrowded and you won't get as much fruits off of it. So we're just going to do this here now. Next thing we're going to do, I will be tying this up in a moment, is we want to go probably about, now I'm 6'4", so I'd say about medium height. We're going to cut these guys off right about here. So what's going to happen now is by cutting them, you're going to encourage, sorry, I get that up here. You're going to encourage new growth. You can already see it coming out of here. And those are going to be your branches, if you want to call that, on your bush that are going to shoot out new shoots to create, come over here, this, which next year's fruit's going to grow in that, okay? And then, of course, these don't, I don't want these to grow forever. I do cut those back later on in the fall to get ready for the next year's season. So we'll go ahead and clip these guys on top here. Here we go. About what height? Uh, I'd say probably about a height of about uh, three and a half, four feet. And... Uh, See, this one here has already been cut, coming up here a little closer. I cut this one a little sooner, and now it's already starting to shoot out the side here. You can see them starting to shoot out the sides. Mm -hmm. So I'll let them go. I'll encourage them to kind of go as long as they want to go right now, but then come the fall or in the, in the winter time too, you cut them back to about, they say about eight knolls. When I say knoll, that's like new growth coming out of here, which the vining would, the fruit will take place with that following spring. But you'll cut this back in the spring or fall, probably about, a good foot and a half back, like that. This is going to keep growing, mm -hmm. and we'll let it grow for a while. So let me go ahead and uh, get these uh, trellised up here. I tie them up, and that's really as simple as it is. Um, so while I do that, I'm going to talk about fertilizing. I do fertilize these things in the early spring uh, with a special fertilizer. I don't have any more left, so I really can't show it to you. It's from Gardens Alive, one of my favorite go-to places for fertilizer. There are other raspberry fertilizers out there you can you can buy, but this is specifically for raspberries. I'm gonna go ahead and take the string and just cut some pieces here. But then during the season, I hit it again with uh, another uh, nutritional support of liquid fertilizer, which is a com and I'll show you in a second how much, uh, which is a combination of fish emulsion and uh, liquid kelp which is liquid seaweed, and then also, believe it or not, blackstrap molasses. So I'm cutting here, though. I'm just getting some, some twine out here to go ahead and uh, support these guys, because if you get a windstorm coming in, they'll break them right over, then you kind of, you lost your opportunity here. Um, I do find that the spring, I mean, the, the newer growth isn't as, isn't as prickly, so I can go and use my bare, my bare hands here. But as it gets more towards winter, they do get pretty prickly. Just tie them up like this here. Just give them some support. And that's as easy as it is. So look at that, how simple that was. Just taking a stake now, you know, if I need to put another stake in here, I can jam another one maybe over here as it starts filling out. And uh, that's really how simple it is. Uh, the key is just taking out the old dead stuff to give it room for the new stuff to grow. Um, I do want to talk to you about the fertilizer real quick and just show you how much I use of this uh, fish emulsion and, and liquid kelp. So I have a, a five-gallon bucket here. And so what I do, this is actually blackstrap molasses. Um, I actually buy it in a gallon because I do use quite a bit of it. But uh, if you just have just a few raspberry bushes, you know, you can find it in most grocery stores. I think it comes like in a 16-ounce container. Um, and then liquid kelp. A lot of places have that. I know even like I know some of the um, bigger hardware stores have the organic uh, sections. Uh, most places carry some kind of liquid kelp or you can find online quite easily too. So my, my solution mixture is, um, I'm sorry this container is well used here, but anyways, um, half a gallon, I mean sorry, for a five gallon pail of water, fish immersion, you're going to take half a cup of this, okay, so half, I'm not going to pour right now because I'm not going to fertilize them tonight, but half a cup of that. And then for tablespoons wise, I'm going to do two and a half to three tablespoons of the liquid kelp in the water. And then two and a half to three tablespoons of the blackstrap molasses. Now the blackstrap molasses has potassium in it. And that's what your boss, your blossoms like. So actually I 
put this on when it's starting to blossom and while it's fruiting. Um, I actually have a whole roll of raspberries down by the street, which will start doing their fall raspberries, a different variety. And every two weeks, probably from end of June um, up to the middle of August, I'll keep hitting it with that over and over as far as every couple weeks, I give it a good shot of this. And that helps get the berries bigger, keeps the nutri nutrient level going because as a lot of times as raspberries are forming in new um, fruits, a lot of times as blossoms come behind, they just keep on producing for a while. So that's how you get more fruit. So, and then as far as the five gallon pail, <clears throat> so all you do, really like a, a bush this size here, I'll probably give it a good gallon and a half. Just dump it, I just dump it on. Next one here, when these are done here, I'll dump it on. Um, do I need to really fertilize it right now? I'm debating, I may. I'll give it a little bit, but uh, I'm more concerned about giving it liquid because it's been a little dry lately. Um, so that's what we do. Just keep it, uh, keep the nutrients up while it's producing. Hit it with some nutrients in the spring. Some good, a good organic fertilizer for raspberries in the spring. And then come fall, I'll go ahead and do a little pruning back in the fall, the extra growth that took place before they start hardening up. So what I do in the fall is I actually spray the black raspberries with a uh, fungicide, because there is a blight that hits black raspberries. It comes from the wild raspberries out in the woods, believe it or not. And you're supposed to have your black raspberries 300 to 500 feet away from any other raspberry. Well, they're probably about 100 feet away, so I do push it. So that helps take care of that blight problem. And also might hit it again in the spring as the spring gets going. So it's a, it's a look for product that takes care of blights for raspberries. And we'll put it in the comment section of what to use. So there we go. That's pretty much how, uh, it really isn't that difficult. It's just following this couple little steps of nutrition, fertilizing, and taking care of the blights and uh, enjoying lovely black raspberries. You do need to net them though, because I'll tell you what, you won't get berries if you don't net them. At least that's true around here. But uh, other than that, I appreciate you coming along with us and checking this out. And they have a lot more videos uh, coming up, a lot more ideas. So don't be afraid to try raspberries in your garden. Um, it's well worth it. And uh, once again, any questions you have, go ahead and feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them back for you. And uh, once again, thank you for those who are watching our channel continually. And for those who are new subscribers, I appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to sharing more videos with you. You don't want to miss. Um, because this is what we do. You want to get some more raspberries? Like this, you got to do the work, but it's fun. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Carter, what should, we, what, what should the new people do when they get on the video? What should they do? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Awesome. And hit that notification bell.